I'm ready to eat. Up to eat. Look at me. What? I could be. Oh yeah. A fast food eater. Hey. Matt's gonna hate that. Yeah. <laughs> Matt is seriously gonna hate that. That's hilarious. He ain't here right now. Oh man. Matt is gonna hate the shit out of that. Uh, welcome back, y'all. This is the podcast that eats with you, yays with you, and what else, Nikki? Loves you way more than those other motherfucking podcasts. I will always love you, <laughs> listeners, and I will always love, love you. you. I actually tried to sing at the end there. Oh Did you yeah, that? yeah. Did you that? I think I'm always trying to sing, <laughs> but I'm just not good at it. So, listeners really who matter. don't know, I'm actually a good singer. This is your boy Jay Keyless, aka Jay Crowder Chowder, uh, <laughs> Jay Jay Clam Chowder, aka My Ty Lawson, aka Ron of Japan Harper. I came up with that <laughs> earlier. Um, Nikki, introduce yourself to the people. Tell Hi. them. I'm Nikki Keyless, a.k.a. Peppermint Patty Mills, <laughs> a.k.a. Kawaiawaska Leonard, <laughs> a.k.a. Minute Bowl of Cereal, <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. Jason Teriyaki. Ooh, can we come up with baseball ones? Let's try baseball Go ones. Go for it. Let's try baseball ones. All right. Albert Poo My Pants Hole. Gross. God damn it. Sorry. How about... Kyle Schwarma. Okay, two on the nose, but uh, Mike Trout. <laughs> Mike mm, Trout. Uh, <laughs> um, um, let's see. Uh, let's. I'm trying to. I, Shohei Martini. That's a good one. So, oh, I like that one. I couldn't think of any. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think of baseball oh, players all man. of a sudden. Let's see. Um, let's see. Ichiro Sushi. Su sushi. That's uh not great. Not great. Not great. Uh, not great. We're coming back. We're coming back. Rishi Mushroom Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better at this than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, um uh, damn it. I can't think of actual baseball player names. I know more basketball player names. Mm, let's see here. Uh I don't know. We're running out of we're, we're wasting time here. Uh, welcome back, y'all. It's EA Love. Um, today is a brother's episode. Matt can't be here today. We were going to finally do the eggs episode, but out of respect for our boy, we don't want to do it today. We're going we're gonna to do a little bit of an audible here, or this is not a football podcast. We're going to change the play up a little bit. Nope, that's not baseball related. We're going to be doing a pitching change. Mm, <laughs> there it is. We're doing a bit of a pitching change. Um... Today we want to talk about baseball food. Yup. The baseball season just started, um, we're, and if we're, you didn't know, we're putting in a pinch eater. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That's great. Pinch eater. That's the name of the yes. episode. That's definitely pinch the name eater. of the episode. Um, <laughs> right? Was it t- the three minutes in? That's pretty good. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we started a baseball podcast recently called Double Yay, and we thought it would be an opportune time to talk about baseball food. Um, again, the podcast is called Double Yay. Um, also, if this is your first time listening to EA Love, welcome. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoy yourself today. And if this is your, uh, if you're a repeat visitor or repeat listener, thank you so much for your listening. We appreciate you. It means a lot to us. Um, everybody, don't forget to rate and review the podcast. Subscribe on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast. It means a lot to us and it allows other people to find the podcast in their respective podcast uh, players. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about some other players, Nikki. You and I both grew up playing baseball, did we not? <gasps> Wait, real quick. Uh, oh. AKA Rice Harper. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty <laughs> yes. good. Also, that's pretty good. Also, <laughs> it's the first baseball player I could think it's of. It's too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of any baseball players. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of more. Oh man, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna <laughs> refrain. I'm gonna refrain because today we're gonna talk about baseball food. Now, you and I grew up being baseball players and grew up around baseball food. So let me ask you a question, Nikki. When I say baseball food, what do you think of? What's the first couple of things that come to your head? Okay, the uh, the obvious choice, obviously, you know, buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. Duh. On top of that, duh, 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 especially since we're from Chicago, a goddamn hot dog. Hot dogs. I legit, anytime I go to a baseball game, I don't care. Even if I'm not hungry, it does not matter. I get me a hot dog and a beer during the game. You have to. 
it, it's, it's just nat- what I want. It's just as much a national pastime as baseball is. Yes. Just as much. Yes. And now, this one isn't professional baseball related, but it's our childhood baseball related. One of those tube tamales that they have. <laughs> now, if you guys aren't from Chicago, they have, we have, I mean, obviously people know what a tamales is, but in Chicago, in the south side of Chicago, there's a factory that makes these tamales. They're like legit just a tube of meat and a tube of corn. It actually comes out of like a tube into the packaging. They wrap it up. They send it to you. I think it's it's less real meat than Taco Bell, and I do not fucking care. Yeah. It's so good. We used to dominate those after our little Go our ham little on those things. Also, something I love to get from uh, baseball uh, at a, at a game, it's got obviously got to be hot out. You don't want no cold because lately all the Cubs games have been cold as fuck. <sighs> That's another thing. Get past it. I'm past it. Um, I love giving me giving getting oh me. Boy. Where's this going? Uh, an Italian ice, <laughs> lemon Italian ice. They okay. get those during the game. I games. don't think of an Italian ice as a baseball food, but also you didn't play nearly as much as I did, so you got to no, eat a no. Lot I got to eat a lot more food than you did. Uh, how about? But they also seeds. have them at. They have them at uh, That's true. At, at Wrigley. That's why I was thinking of that. Sunflower seeds? Uh, love me some sunflower seeds. Bubble Wasn't, gum? Bubble gum's great. Big League Chew. Ooh. What was your uh, favorite flavor of sunflower seeds? Um, I was a fan of the original for sure. Sure. Uh, I did love me some barbecue. Barbecue was hit. Barbecue yeah. was... And also ranch. Ranch, ranch was, was the fucking Just best. So good. I remember when we were playing baseball and you would legit like... <laughs> you would legitimately just trade with people. Like, yo, I got some Big League Chew. Okay, I'll take some of Big League Chew for a handful of your ranch. <laughs> and all right, all right, you give me a ranch, handful of ranch. You got friggin' just peanuts. Hello. Uh, which I don't know if I ever did it while playing, but while you're watching games, I'll eat some peanuts. Right. Um, I wasn't a big fan of pumpkin seeds. Yeah, pumpkin seeds are good for you, though. I eat them a lot more now. But anyways, the reason that I bring that up is that baseball food is changing, Nikki. Um, mm-hmm. For listeners out there, we came upon an article on The Eater – today talking about the modern age of baseball food now nikki and i grew up being baseball fans we love baseball however i think nikki can agree with me when i say this baseball is boring as fuck yeah it's more of a uh, of a hangout experience i've noticed uh d- i will admit this playoff baseball is fucking amazing incredibly fun incredibly fun it is ridiculous, but the regular season, it's a hundred and too long, games. too fucking long. So many games, games get up to four hours long. It, it gets to be a bit much during the regular season. So instead of paying attention to the games in the regular season, you got to find shit to do like eating that food. Hey man, buddy. Nom, nom, nom. Now we came across this article and this article pointed out something that you and I probably noticed as, you know, Cubs fans going to Cubs games is Baseball teams are realizing that in order to get more and more people to the games, they need to make the experience of coming to the ballpark more and more fun. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to do that with a game that is that slow is through food and drink. Mm -hmm. So what you're starting to see in a lot of these ballparks is bringing in microbreweries and giving them their own spot so that they can get their own beer stand bringing in local restaurants like here in chicago there's a big star place there's an uh, not al al's beef is not great but like there's are there are local cuisines yeah. at many of these these restaurants well, really quick because uh, i italian beef is a very big chicago thing i've learned that a lot of people outside of chicago don't know what the fuck that is nope. it's 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 beef that they cook in a jus sauce. I feel like we have talked about this because I say a jus so often. It's so fucking good. It's delicious. But so good. To get to the point, so the 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 ah shit. The stadiums out there are starting to bring in more local cuisine in order to start to attract a crowd to the game that mm-hmm. enjoys food the Rockies, much like ourselves. The Rockies have a brewery inside of the their well, stadium. A lot of people don't know this, but the Blue Moon Brewery actually originated in Coors Field. Yeah, that's Coors where Field, they started. Yeah. They had a little like kiosk basically inside of Coors Field, and it became the most popular brew mm-hmm. at the games. And by by proxy, became the most popular brewery yeah. in in Denver, and is now you know 
a big a, deal. Incredible, incredibly famous. Blue Moon is the beer you go to when you want when you're like, ooh, I can get fancy and throw an orange in my drink. <laughs> Like I, I want to orange it fancy. up. Nobody's getting fancy I, with we, Blue Moon. Well, I remember we used to do uh, what was it? Sh- was it shots of orange vodka in the Blue Moon? I think it uh, was Jeff uh, used to do that. Sec. Triple sec. That's orange what it was. Triple orange sec. triple sec. A little sugar. Our uncle Jeff would like toss that at the bottom and then fill it up with the Blue Moon, <laughs> and then throw an orange on it. That was citrus. That was citrusy as fuck. Citrusy <laughs> as fuck. Uh, so let's go back to this article here. I wanted to talk about some of the items that we t- that we saw on this menu because the reality is is that the landscape of baseball food is changing. And one of the interesting things that they mentioned here is that in the age of social media, part of the ballpark experience is actually making the food. Um, I hate to say this, but like photogenic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like making it Instagrammable, making it so that people that come to the game take a picture of a cheese pool on like a mozzarella stick or, you know, taking a picture of, you know, these, the, uh, what was it, the horseshoe at, horse, at, the, at the White City, yeah, you know, at the like, Red Field and shit. You know, the classic ones before, now that they're, they're branching out now, but the two classic ones for a while there was either nachos or ice cream in a baseball helmet. Right, exactly. That you get to keep. Which, Funnel cake, uh, shit like I that. still have the baseball helmet that I had when I was like from we put Absolutely. nachos in from when we and, were like and kids. That's, I, I want to be clear here. Like I'm not, I'm not discounting that food because there's still a place for that food for sure. But I think it's awesome that ballparks are realizing like we, we need a reason for people to come to the games and baseball, unlike basketball and football is very local fi- yeah. fixated. Like Cubs fans love Cubs baseball and don't really pay attention to what's going on with other baseball. Yeah. teams. Maybe the team, unless in their they're division, playing the Cubs. Exactly. Maybe teams in their division, but they don't really pay attention to other baseball teams. And like, yeah. You know, Tampa Bay Rays fans could give a fuck about what's going on with the Chicago Cubs. You know and what I mean? Think, yeah. And like Miami, I don't know if they care about even their own team. I don't so, think they like, care about it. <laughs> so anyways, like um, it's it's interesting that a lot of these teams now are starting to are, are really starting to put an emphasis on the food culture. So, for example, in the article, um, they highlight the Mets and City Field. And maybe, Nikki, maybe you can highlight some of the restaurants that were mentioned uh yeah in that, the they, article uh one of the first things they talk about is sweet chick which is a chicken and waffle place that is actually co-owned by nas so shout out to nas Dope. uh we always love anything that you're gonna be doing um there's uh shake shack in there which i guess has been there for a while now uh which is pretty awesome i i like shake shack when i went there um and then uh david chang the uh Chef uh, has a new uh, podcaster, by the way. He has a podcast on the Ringer Network called the David Chang Podcast. Oh, I did not know that. As so today, shout out to out, the no, it's Ringer. Coming out tomorrow, uh, not at the time that this podcast will be going up. Released, it would have come be, up. It'll be yeah. yesterday. Um, but yeah, uh, he's got a chicken spot called Fuku, uh, which they've. It's like kind of. It's it's all chicken like sandwiches and stuff like that. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, and Fuku is an yeah. offshoot of Momo Fuku, which is his original restaurant that he opened up. That in makes a lot of sense, yeah. actually. Now that I think about just, it, they just do like like Asian style sandwiches. Yeah, which is really really. Cool. Um, they've got a uh, there's a place called Nicoletta inside there. It's a uh, pizza place, and they're kind of famous for these things that they're calling Italian cheese balls. Yeah, so they have like pepperoni and cheese. Yeah, it's it's like a mozzarella like fried, stick, but basically. it's a ball instead, and it it looks better. The cheese is gooier. And that's one of the things that they were talking about, like people always doing yeah, those cheese fucking pool, cheese man. pool, that cheese pool which a, I did not know what, what that very, was until today. It's very Instagrammable. Yeah. Cheese pools are very Instagrammable. Yeah. And you need that. Like, this is the thing is like, if you think about the stuff that the, the, the amount of times that we post on the EA love Instagram account, you take a picture, you tag the location of where you yeah. got that food from. Mm-hmm. That's a common approach that everybody does, or they at them in the caption. Yeah. And that is going to drive traffic to baseball games. Mm-hmm. People may not love baseball but they love the experience that they might be able to get with going with their friends having some drinks you know having some great food drinking some good beer so going to the stadium and having these food items yeah that you know they they can't get anywhere else or like they're like off menu items than you might get mm-hmm. at a big star or a momofuku or whatever like that's the shit that you want to experience and and they're making it easier for people to do that yeah and like even before they started adding like food to their like the cubs uh, chicago all of their sports teams almost always sell out like freaking all the time. The, the main ones like the Cubs, the Blackhawks, the, the bulls and the bears. Unfortunately, the, the white Sox don't do that great, uh, but it's cause they're kind of, it's kind of cause they're like on the, on the South side. They're hard to get to. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely people but over there. Like, I went to yeah. Bridgeport this week. This um, but week, like but. 
those games, people fucking showed up even as these teams are straight shit because it's a fun experience to have with your friends. Yeah. And now adding food to all that is... I, I mean, since when does food make something It makes worse, the entire experience, you know? and it also helps the games go by. But, like, the first step is getting people in the stadium. Yes. And if you have, like, a good quality stadium experience, it's going to help get people there. Mm-hmm. Now, with that being said, one of the things that was highlighted in the actual article is the fact that this year was the first annual Major League Baseball Food Fest. Yeah. Now, for those people that are out there that are listening... Uh, the Major League Baseball Food Fest was basically all 30 teams in Major League Baseball brought to the festival their best item, their most like their hard hitting item that's yeah. on their menu currently in the stadiums for a competition. Not, so go uh, ahead and let's I read think some of these. yeah, I was say actually I think if you guys want to look at the full list, go to mlb.com slash baseball food festival slash menu. Uh, in between baseball, food, and festival, there's uh, some hyphens. So make sure if, if you really want to, you can also just Google it. Uh, but you guys know how to find shit, cause, so you can do that. Uh, and it's actually broken up on American League and National League. You can see a little picture of the team's logo right next to whatever food it is that they're having. Uh, I think we should start off with the National League. Uh, and National League, right off the back, the Cubs, we feel like, kind of did a yeah, they did the Chicago they, dog. They phoned it in a little bit. They phoned bit, it in. But, Everyone knows what the fuck a Chicago but dog is. The Chicago dog is a it's fucking It's a good stable. dog. Yeah, it's, it's a, a great one. Uh, I also think a churro dog out of Arizona, that sounds interesting. I, it's, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. My thing is, is it, is it a churro bun with a hot dog in the it's middle? It's unclear. Or is it like a hot dog surrounded by like churro batter? That's what I was thinking. Which... You know what? I'm back. That on sounds good. <laughs> I'm back. On yeah. That's like a souped up pig in a blanket. Yeah. 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 Churro dog sounds pretty good. Uh, the Dodgers went out of left field instead of doing just the Dodger dog, which you think they would do. They That's did something right called a Cheeto Lote. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm assu- I think we can all assume Cheetos are in there. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming that it's like they're probably making an elote. It's like it's probably like a walking taco, mm. but in a Cheeto bag. That makes sense. So it's like elote, like. Seasonings, corn, mayonnaise, etc., mixed with Cheetos. That doesn't sound terrible. Or, or, oh no, a Cheeto lote is an elote with crumbs of Cheetos on top of it. That makes even That's more what a Cheeto sense. Lote yeah, is, for sure. That makes a lot more sense. A lot of these are hard to decipher. Yeah. But well, some of them are. Miami has a bacon wrap plantain. Bacon wrap plantain. Put that in my mouth. I will eat right them. now. Fuck. I, okay. Real quick. Whole Foods over uh, the one that's by the IO. They now have plantains in their hot and ready section. I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. I I didn't try them, but I just saw it. And like I told Destiny about it. And like Destiny. No, you know what I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, Destiny, like, legitimately, she loves plantains. Plantains are great. And she was just, I told her, and she was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Get me some. And I was like, I'm not going to get you some because I was at work. So yeah. by the time it was all said and done, it would have been like four hours later. Yeah. It would have been gross. But a bacon wrap plantain sounds fucking good. So looking at some of these, what's cool is you get to see, you really get to see the, um, the locality behind the yeah. dishes like 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 in pittsburgh pierogies are huge mm-hmm. like their polish population in uh, pittsburgh is that's ginormous. ridiculous it, so for pittsburgh they brought a pulled pork pierogi hoagie that is exce- say excessive. that five times fast it's excessive. <laughs> that's you fucking... know seaside markets trip nachos like san diego you get yeah. your seafood crab sandwich in, in san francisco bay mm-hmm. area of crab course, grilled like, cheese coming out of washington national sounds fucking fire and hell. you know what is super on brand milwaukee wisconsin what do they get Cheddar beer bratwurst. Yeah, I'm on board for all these. If you guys are out there, oh, yeah. definitely take a look the Mets, at the... The Mets got a deli pastrami sandwich. You need that. Ooh. Smoked jerk chicken nachos in Toronto. That is coming out of Toronto. So, yeah, let's just switch Jamaican, over to the uh There's a American large League. Jamaican community in Toronto, look, so it's cool to see I'm that. I'm all about Jamaican food. Of course, the Red good. Sox have lobster rolls. Like mm-hmm. You need lobster rolls if you don't have a good lobster roll in New England. Baltimore like, brings you, you some uh, Chesapeake waffle fries. That Love sounds that. pretty good. Love that chicken and waffle cone in Houston. That sounds fucking That bomb. sounds great. Chicken shawarma nachos coming out of detroit that's a that's a coming out of left field so that's fucking interesting coming out of. but i do think that it, i do think that detroit has a larger indian middle eastern population okay um what i do like is that the anaheim angels actually have japanese pork katsu which speaks volumes to like yeah. their international culture and a lot of the japanese players that they have you know like a one shea otani for the, the baseball fans and, out there yeah and then like the freaking the yankees got adobo bao that sounds amazing right that sounds very dominican <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. but also it's a bao sandwich so it's 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 got to be a momofuku type deal yeah like a adobo bao and then guys we're gonna go ahead and say this uh seattle 
is not gonna just not they're not coming out of left field. They're coming out of like I don't know, left galaxy. <laughs> they're doing toasted grasshoppers. I, is it just a is it just a grilled grasshopper? I wonder. Is there any breading on that? I feel like you have to put breading or no. You need a dipping sauce shit. too. Nobody's right? gonna eat that shit just like raw. Or not raw, but like just like plain. Nobody's yeah. gonna eat that shit plain. There's gotta be There's something no on chance. it. Um, the Rangers have chicken and donuts. Yeah, I was going to say, they kind of phoned that said, in. They're yeah. just like, do these go together? Like, no, we just had chicken and oh, we had donuts. We also haven't talked about the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Theirs is the Reuben Cuban. That's, I mean, I'd eat that. Don't get me wrong. Because oh, uh, I love me a Reuben and I love me a Cubano. I wonder. That's an interesting dish. I'm interested to see what's actually And, and it doesn't actually say that it's a Cubano, but that's just what my mind I'm went to. That. And you kind of have to assume that. That I'm seems like that. a great combination. Um, so... When you go to a game, and think I think we talked about this a little bit. So you go to a game, and your go-to dish is what? My go-to dish is, in fact, it's it's a hot dog with freaking, um, usually, and and because it's in Chicago, I, I get I really because normally I'll get like you know a hot dog with onions, mustard, relish, and all that. So at, at the game, I'm just like, give me that hot dog. With mustard, because I I don't want to I don't know how long I'm gonna have to worry about because it with their if they're walking up and down the aisles, right. if I go and get it myself, I'll put everything on there because yeah. they had little stations. But I just get like a mustard hot dog and a beer. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound appetizing, but yeah. I eat the fuck out of it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, the hot dog is just always a safe move. But like like I said earlier, like you look at. And granted, we have our opinions about Smoke Daddy, but like you look at Wrigley and now they have like Smoke Daddy available. They have they Big Star Big available. Star, yeah. They have like a lot of these local restaurants. You know, a lot of these teams are starting to add local restaurants, restaurants that people enjoy already what's, to their cuisine. What's the pizza that they always have there? And it's always at like convention centers. Um, Connie's, Connie's Connie's Pizza. Yeah, Connie's is bomb though. That's the only that's, time. That's not local at no, all. <laughs> no, it's not local at all. But it's it, before they started bringing local stuff in. And I'm sure they have like maybe who knows? Maybe Peace Pizza will start being at fucking Wrigley. I don't know. But like for a while there, just get. I remember like the only time I'd ever eat Connie's Pizza is if I was at like a Cubs game or if I was at the fucking auto show. Well, now that you mentioned Peace, you know who else is at fucking Wrigley's? Where? Hot dogs. Hot dogs is at Wrigley. Hot now? dogs has a stand at Wrigley now. Oh, what the t- what the yeah. tits? So for the listeners who don't know and who aren't from Chicago, hot dogs was the I, the bell of the ball in terms of a hot dog restaurant um, and, and fast food place here in Chicago. And Doug retired like four years ago. Yeah, he just said fuck it, I'm done. Closed down. Didn't want to do it anymore. Did a couple collabs with a couple local restaurants here in Chicago, but pretty much decided that and he, went he to was a couple, done with the He game. went to a couple of food festivals yes. too, and was at those and like showed up here, showed up there, but pretty much. You know, quit, uh, not quit, retired. You know, he just yeah. retired. They now have a hot dogs at Wrigley Field. Fuck, I gotta go to and, the Cubs game. Yo, for for the people who have appreciated hot dogs over the years, you get it. But those who don't, you have to understand like the the creativity that Doug put together in a lot of these sausages and hot dogs that he put together. They had like duck fat an fries. Elvis dog. The duck fat fries were fucking amazing. They only had them available on Fridays, so you had to wait in line. But these are the types of things that are exciting when you go to the baseball game where it's just like, yeah, you can have a hot dog. And and the traditionalists are always going to be like, give me a hot dog, give me an old style, whatever my beer of choice is, you know, a Yanglings if you're on the East Coast. And like there's plenty of beers that you can have. But like for for the younger generation, the people that are going to start to become baseball fans, you need to have those attractions. You need to have the local food, and you need to have things like donut balls with chicken and chicken and waffle fries. And and I mean, you need to have these options that people can take pictures of, that they can experience, that they can share with their friends. Um, well, I all of a sudden, what, real quick, just to let you guys know, if you never saw a line at hot dogs. It would literally go down the block. It was so before ugly. they even opened an hour before they opened, and it's like a forty-five minute wait just to get to the front way and order. Lo- way longer than that. I'm saying, but I'm saying, like even just an hour before they opened, if they already were already open, you were fucked. You weren't getting in that place. But they had one dog that I can't remember, but it was like real fancy. Do you yeah, remember? Yeah, they about? had one with like. I think it was like shaved foie gras on it. That's what it was. Yeah, they had a foie gras dog. It was a foie gras that, dog. It wasn't shaved. It was like a, it was like a lather. It was yeah. like a like a not a dip, but it was just like 
It was like a mush. Almost. Yeah, but it was a gourmet fucking hot dog, which I I never got to try it, and I was very sad. I would have eaten it, but I never got to try it. Yeah, I never um, did either. But at that, when I was eating at hot dogs regularly, I wasn't a I wasn't a foodie. I wasn't the guy that. I yeah. Am now. Um. Yeah. Speak, speaking of which, real quick, just gonna do a sidebar. Uh, down the street from where hot dogs used to be. Uh, used to be this amazing Mexican restaurant that we went to when we were kids. It closed down and got replaced by a place called Honey Butter Fried Chicken. It did. Destiny I, yeah, La Finca. La Finca. Uh, Destiny I finally went to Honey Butter Fried Chicken. What's your review? Holy fuck, I love Honey Butter. Yeah, I gotta go back there. They've got good chicken, and we I got the pimento mac and cheese, mm-hmm. which was just okay. Their their mashed potatoes were very good. Mm. Um, but hot damn. That butter. Yeah. I gotta go Literally back. lathering. And like everyone that worked there was so fucking nice. Yeah. I got to go back there again. It's been, a, it's been a long time and I've only ordered from there. So I've never actually eaten at the restaurant. I need, I need to go to honey butter. Yeah. So I just um, had to bring that up. No, it that's actually so okay. Because one of the things that I wanted to talk about today that was at, on the original agenda is a Chicago institution quenchers oh, yeah. on Western and Fullerton here in Chicago. So this is our Chicago food news, food news. Uh, section. Quenchers, after almost 40 years in business, will be closing um, to become a pediatric office. Now, I don't know how much time you spent at Quenchers, but I've been to Quenchers a couple of times for concerts, just meeting friends for drinks. It's your classic like dive bar concert venue in yeah. Chicago and it's been around for years. The main bartender's been there for 30 years and it's just the type of like no bullshit, no nonsense place that's been there since yeah. like the late 70s. Um the owner wanted to sell it. Basically he wanted to retire and he was hoping that whoever bought it would keep up the bar and 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 maintain it as a bar. And unfortunately, the ownership group that bought it decided to turn it into a medical office. Now, you need medical offices. Yeah. And it, so if on it's, so it's a pediatric place, mm-hmm. that's keeping kids healthy. I can't get mad about that. <laughs> I get it. I, get I can't it. be like, I can't be like, no, screw the kids. I need to fuck my liver up, man. <laughs> like, I it's get just, it. It just sucks that like, you know, one of the great bars in Chicago, one of the the, the OGs in the Chicago land area is uh is closing down its doors and this is happening a lot yeah, it more often and it happens all, all the time but you know you hate to see that you know you hope like things like that get passed down yeah. from generation to generation something that was great about quenchers free popcorn that's always true. no that's matter true. what you just fucking and the just, food the food was good and it was a great concert venue. i mean i it never really tried was. it but that heifer melt sounds good yeah. it's roast beef provolone caramelized onion potato chip crumbs green onion sriracha mayo on a marble rye with chips you know what i mean for eight bucks you know what i mean I that mean, is not bad um it was yeah. cash only which kind of fucked me over the first time i went there i went there and they're like it's cash only and i was like ah shit and i went to the atm and it's like fucking four dollars charged to yeah. take money out yeah which I'm not a huge fan of that, but you know, hey, I never went there again without fucking cash. Yeah, credit card processing fees are a pain in the ass, and co- you know, small businesses don't want to pay that. I shit. get it. I get it. I, I get understand it. it. Um, I just didn't know ahead of time, which so, was more of a of a of a how dare you to my friends who had been there like 20 times and never told me mm-hmm. uh, than it was to the people who own the place. I have no problem with places that are cash only. Nah. Boiler rooms, cash only. Right. Love boiler room. Right. Exactly. I'll never say no. Exactly. Think bad things about boiler room. Um. Back to the topic of baseball, though, for a second. Yay or nay on peanuts while watching a baseball game? It's hard because I have no problem. I like peanuts, um, and I I do remember eating peanuts during a baseball game. They're just so dusty. <laughs> They're very dusty. They're so dusty. Uh, yeah, and they get everywhere. And I know you can just throw them on the floor, which is and cool. It, it's I feel cool. bad thinking I about it. In feel bad. But. Yeah. Or, like, I, there used to be a restaurant that we went to where you can just get a thing of peanuts and you would just throw them on the floor. And I was like, at the end of the day, someone has to fucking Miller's clean Pub, up. downtown Chicago. Miller's Pub. That's what it was. You just go drink. Um, you just go to the bar, you eat your peanuts, you throw them on the ground, and you just move on. At the end of the day, someone has to clean up your spit, pretty much. And I'm just like, ugh. I hope that somebody has mastered, like, the cleanup process for I'm sure peanuts. by now they're very good at it. Uh, but, um... <laughs> I'm indifferent on peanuts. Yeah. I, I like pe- like I already said I've already said it. I like peanuts. But I don't know, I'm not gonna spend three bucks on a freaking uh a bag of peanuts. Yeah. I I'll get it. I'll spend eight dollars on a hot dog though. Yeah. Controversial question. <laughs> and fourteen dollars on a beer. Con- controversial <laughs> Go Cubs. Yeah. Speaking, uh. Good segue. 
uh, controversial question. Do you enjoy going to Wrigley for a game and food over guaranteed rate or vice versa? Where is your preferred destination when going to see a game? For a half a second, I was like, guaranteed rate? Where the fuck is that's that? I forgot that's now. their newest that's name. What they call it. I was like, you talking about the cell? Or are you talking about Comiskey? What are we doing here? Uh, but you know what's very funny? It's not funny. It, the White Sox have way... Sorry for the long pause. The White Sox have way better food at their games. They do have better food. They The, the Cubs... There, ninety five percent of the thing is like the team you're watching, the environment, you know, and that old it, that place is fucking old as shit. It's ancient, but it's so historic. it's like yeah, it's like that historic feel, and like it's just getting to hang out with your buds and be like, I'm at Wrigley Field. That's yeah. a cool thing. Uh, whatever the fuck it's called now, <laughs> the cell. We can call it the cell. The so. cell. I'll Comiskey. still call it the cell. Comiskey, where the White Sox play. They've got good food. I've been there a few times. With friends where I've gotten like a fucking nice like Sunday on top of a giant cookie and like that was delicious with like, like three different flavors of ice cream on top of a cookie with the whipped cream fudge and caramel and nuts. Mwah. Yeah, it's a lot, but I was also like a kid, so yeah. it's it's okay. Well, not only is not only is the food great, but and again, I'm a Cubs fan through and through, but the stadium and this the best stadiums that I've been to, like I've been to AT&T Park in San Francisco. The best stadiums I've been to are geared towards like in- enhancing the, the, the fan experience. Mm-hmm. And that means making it easy to walk around, yes. like making having common areas where people can hang out and drink and talk. And like you kind of need oh, yeah, that, that as a part of the experience. The one the best thing, because we went to a game last year at uh, Guaranteed Rate. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went there last year, and I didn't even. We were in some shit seats because they were like ten dollars tickets, three dollar tickets. So of course they're not going to be amazing seats. Uh, but like, I we got there in the third inning, and everyone's like, "You guys want to go to?" I think it was called Double Play or something like that. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. it's a bar in right field, like yeah, underneath everything, and you can see the game from there, yeah. and it's. You walk in and literally they just have fucking fridges of beer and you can grab two beers at a time and every fridge is broken up based on the type of beer and they tell you the pricing on them as well as like the alcohol percentage and And like small details, local local beers. That is not really a thing at Wrigley. Wrigley, you can get old style, you can get what? 312 and then the Goose Island IPA yeah. and I really can't think of anything else. Yeah, I mean you can get your Bud and your, and Miller. your Miller. Yeah, that, that's about it. But there they I freaking I I had a half acre. I had like I think I had a left hand which isn't a Chicago br- sure. uh, brewery but still like they had fucking options there. Well, now they they just opened up uh, an area where they're only selling Revolution uh, Revolution Brewing. That's beers. awesome. Like only Revolution. That's so awesome. Um, and there's food there too. So it's just like the fan experience is great. Um, all in all, I love to see that the sport that I loved growing up is finally starting to get into the new ages because baseball was dying drastically yeah. because as a sport, it wasn't as fun. But they have to get back to the roots of what makes it fun. It's just like having fun at the ballpark, being with your boys, being mm-hmm. with your dad, whomever, you know, your mom or whatever, uh, and really enjoying the game. And the food has stepped it up to a new level. And I think I can say for myself, at least, I'd love to go to the MLB Food Fest oh, next year. Oh, fuck, yes. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, anything you want to talk about today before we wrap up? Um, oh, I have a fun story for everyone to hear. Let's get it. So, um, in, uh, do you smell what the yay is cooking? Uh, we're not doing that segment because Matt has all the equipment to be able to do all that (laughs) stuff. (laughs) We're, we miss you, Matt. Um, I, (laughs) you can blame it all on me. Sorry. Um, I made it's nothing crazy. It wasn't like a big deal. I just made some pork uh, tenderloin with some green beans, and then I, I, you know, I did like a little bit of a sauce with some uh, Louisiana sauce and everything. I cooked everything. I put it all in a beautiful little Tupperware for me to take to work today. I got up for work today at six. Then I put my alarm again for six thirty. Then I got up at six thirty, and I stayed on my phone. Till about 6.50. Then I got up and actually started getting ready for work. <laughs> I know. Terrible. I had to leave by 7.30. I'm not proud of you. No, I'm not proud of myself either. It's because it was, it's just, 
I'm, I'm busy. I've been working mm-hmm. a lot, all right? Mm-hmm. I've been getting home at, at freaking 11.30 every day and having up at 6. It's a lot. It's okay. Yeah. Being a grown-up is hard. It is hard. So, anyways, got got my food, everything, get to gear, got to work, everything's okay. I got a couple of assholes at work, but that's what happens when you work at a bank in a very rich neighborhood. Classic. People are assholes. Um, and then... Yeah, they were like, Nick, you want to go to lunch? I was like, yep, I'm heading off to lunch. I walk over to lunch. I grab my thing, throw it in the microwave, heat it up. I'm setting up. I'm going to watch uh, an episode of The Office, uh, season six. I watched uh, the episode um, where uh, it was the Glee viewing party at Gabe's <laughs> house. You take uh, Gabe, you take Mike, you get gay Mike, best friends. Uh, <laughs> and I, it, you know, the, the microwave goes off. I open up the microwave. I grab it. And I look in and I'm, you know, moving around, make sure everything's hot. And I'm like, huh, <laughs> there are a lot of green beans in here. <laughs> no. Like an unnecessary amount of green beans. Where's my pork? <laughs> Where's my Louisiana <laughs> sauce? I realized that what I did was took the Tupperware that was just all the green beans and I brought that to work. <laughs> And I was uh, livid. And I called Destiny like, <laughs> I was like, Destiny, you won't believe what the fuck I just did. And she was like, oh my God, what's wrong? I brought, and I told her and she's like, oh, that's not that big a deal. I was like, it is a fucking big deal. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you can't just eat green beans for lunch? <laughs> that's exactly I'm what I said. I'm going to sip on myself forever. So I was like, I'm not going to eat just green. And she just goes, well, why don't you just go to Walgreens and grab like a smoothie and a granola bar? And I was like, but I'm still doing slow carb. And she was like, but you can just fucking cheat today so you can have a smoothie and a granola bar. And I was like, all right, that is a smart idea. I will admit that. Love you to death. But you and I both know that I will break through that bulletproof glass if I have to spend the rest of the day dealing with these fucking customers on a stomach full of nuts coffee a smoothie and a granola bar i will fucking i will you i would eat half the granola bar sharpen the other half of it so i can use it to stab a customer if i had to have that for my fucking lunch that's excessive i will never sleep in on a day that i have to get up early for work again don't do it it was such a bad idea be an adult that is all I have to add for this episode. Well, that's a great story, Nikki. Where can the people find you? Anything you want to plug before we wrap up today? You beautiful people can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Nikki Palooza. You can also come and watch me perform improv on May 6th at 8 p.m. at the IL Theater called The Graduation Shows. I'm, I'm a graduate, folks. I got a degree. Bring in all that. I'm, I'll bring all that debt coming on. Yeah, Nikki. Uh, that's what happened on May 6th. Then May 13th and the 20th, I will be at the second city performing in a sketch show called sin night. It's all about the service industry. Um, you can follow us on YouTube, the yay network on Twitch. Yay network. No, the just yay network. Um, you can follow our boy, Matt Reed on Twitter, fat Reed, F A T T R E E D. And then on Instagram, fat Reed, F A T T R three, three D. We're going to find you, you son. We're going to find you, fat Reed. You can run and tell that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at the yay network on Instagram at, uh, E E A love. Uh, you can follow me, J underscore Kiles. Um, on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, per usual, don't forget to rate and review and subscribe to the podcast. You can also follow our other podcast, NBA Pod, on Twitter or on Instagram at NBA Pod. Also, we already talked about it in the beginning, but listen to another one of our podcasts, Double Yay. Double if y'all yay. like baseball, we're not going to talk. They don't talk about. Ba- I'm not in that one. They don't talk about baseball food. They just talk about actual baseball. Although now we might talk about baseball. You food could have week. an episode. There's we nothing might have wrong to with that. Rehit this one up. Um, cool. Well, um, this has been the podcast that eats with you, yays with you, and loves you very, very much. Thanks for listening. <laughs>